Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today for another installment of the Baker Diversity Lecture Series. My name is Nicole Cook. I am the Augusta Baker Endowed Chair at the School of Information Science at the University of South Carolina. So before we get started today, I just want to give you some housekeeping items. Everyone entering the webinar is in listen-only mode, uh, and your, also, your cameras have also been disabled. And so you'll be able to hear us, uh, but we won't be able to hear you. And so just for, from a technical point of view, if you are having any audio issues, some recommendations would be to change browsers, to also log out and log back in. And then finally, if you check your registration confirmation emails, there are dial-in phone numbers that you can use to use uh, your phone for audio. Similarly, GoToMeeting or GoToWebinar, which is what we're using today, uh, does not permit us to chat to one another, but we can absolutely take questions. So in your control panels, uh, maybe about uh, six tabs down, there is a question and answer tab. So if you would be so kind as to enter your questions there, we will absolutely be keeping track of them and we'll have time uh, to ask our guests some questions at the conclusion of the presentation. And finally, the lecture is being recorded and will be up on the Baker Diversity website sometime next week. So now that housekeeping is out of the way, I want to very briefly uh, introduce our guest, Ralph McDaniels, also known as DJ Ralph McDaniels. So very excited uh, to have Ralph with us today. In the 1980s and 90s, DJ Ralph McDaniels introduced hip hop bands to emerging artists as co-host of Video Music Box, which was a wildly popular and influential video program on New York's public television station, WNYC TV. Today, McDaniels continues to share his passion as the hip hop coordinator at Queens Public Library, where he builds relationships within the hip hop community and organizes programming ranging from celebrity talks to graffiti workshops. And he also is very active on Instagram, uh, where he continues to expose us to new music. Now, today in Ralph's talk, we'll be talking about and exploring the intersection of hip hop culture media literacy and library programming. So I'm, again, very, very excited to welcome Ralph uh, to, and thank you so much for joining us today. And I'm gonna turn it right over to you. Thank you so much. I'm very excited to be here. This is crazy. You know, like I'm, I'm in New York. So uh, I, I, I always say big shout out to everybody across the country and all the people that are checking in right now with the Baker Diversity Series. This is awesome. Um, and good afternoon to everyone, all the organizers. Thank you for everything that you put to, through today. Um, and so I'm going to talk about hip hop and I'm going to talk a little bit about, you know, what I do at Queens Public Library in New York City. So in uh, New York City, there's three library systems. There's the Queens Public Library System, there's the Brooklyn Public Library System, and there's New York Public Library System. Queens has over 62 branches in its particular area. So as you can imagine, that's a lot of programming that's a lot of uh, you know services that we provide. And so when I came to Queens Public Library five years ago, um, under the leadership of Kim uh, McNeil Capers, she said, look, I wanna do something different. I wanna do hip hop. I wanna get people excited. You know, We have to get young people in, into the library. We have to get teenagers to come back. We have to get the, the generation X to come back. You know, Whatever that was, I was like, all right, fine, let's do it. You know, <laughs> let's make it happen. So um, my first um, approach to this was, OK, first of all, do people even know what hip hop is all about? You know, other than the records that they hear uh, on, on the radio or the dances that they do on TikTok. You know, I'm like, that's cool. But let me give you a little bit, of, a little little idea of what hip hop is all about. Let's break it down. You know, it's the DJ, it's the MC, it's the break dancer, it's the graffiti artist. And the fifth element um, is knowledge is what we're doing right now is you know, spreading knowledge to others who are going to take it and build on it and do other things with it. So, um, you know, I don't know how many people that are on right now are librarians, but take this information and make it work for you in your own um, space, you know, and do whatever you want to do with it, because that's what I do. I'm not a librarian. So when I came to the library, to the library in Queens, 
people looked at me like, well, I don't understand. I don't understand, Ralph. What are you talking about? You're talking too fast. You're talking hip hop. You know, I'm like, well, I'm going to tell you what it is. And you guys turn it into how we can make this circulate in the system, how we can make people come in and get more library cards. How can we make, how can we make people sign up for um, for different services that we have at Queens Public Library? And we'll do that so we can use hip hop as a tool to lead to other programs that are at the library. So I'm going to go through and I'm, I've shared my screen. Hopefully you guys can see that as well as you can see me. I hope you can see me. <laughs> so one of the things that's very popular, of course, is gaming. And gamers are, you know, very um, 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 dedicated to what they do. So I said, we have to find a, a hip hop gamer. And, um, and the gamers came in and we had hip hop versus gamers program. And these are some of the services that we do. And we brought people in and you'd be surprised how excited folks were to go into a space in the library. We had a giant like, you know, 75 inch screen at the time. Now they probably make 90 inch screens. But we had a giant screen and the gamers came in and one of the top gamers, um, you know, he, he does it for money and came in and started to um, go against people in the in the room that were in the in the um, in the space, the teens that were there after school. And we learned that a lot of these teens that were there and they were taking out books and they were, you know, having their little meetings um, and doing homework and things like that were actually awesome gamers. So they were super interested in that. And they were they came. They wanted to do it again. And we've done it in over three of or four of our um, our branches throughout the Queens Public Library system. You know, the programming is very important. And I work um, at the library under PSD, which is Program Services. Um, and that includes a lot of different things, you know. So I'm always like coming up with ideas that I can take to the different branches. And one thing about Queens Public Library is it is very diverse. So you have a, certain areas that may be predominantly African-American. You have, may have areas that may be predominantly Asian Americans, Latino Americans. So you have to adjust to those particular areas. In some cases, and especially in Latino areas, they don't even speak English in some of those, those branches. So we have really have to come with a bilingual programmer, somebody that can do um, programs in different languages and, and, and make it real cool. Um, but I'd like to bring the old school back. So in this slide right here, um, the guy leaning next to me with the patch on his eye is the legendary hip hop artist, Slick Rick a good friend of mine and he came in and he had a, we had a discussion um and 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 he's awesome you know he's a great storyteller if you've ever heard any of his stories if you ever heard uh checked out any of his ebooks or any read on any of his books he's awesome he didn't come to talk about books that day but I'll get to what he came to talk about in a little while um I'm currently um in the, the picture there with um uh, myself is I'm at um, my um microphone from when I was doing a video show called Video Music Box is in the Smithsonian African American Museum. And that's me at the opening of the Smithsonian African American Museum and um, taking a picture in front of uh, my my uh, my booth when there's some other things going on there. You know, this is something that we do, you know, every day. And I tell people in hip hop, you know, you know, like we walk the walk and we talk the talk. So um, part of our our area is is um, is outreach. And so um, when doing outreach, we go to all different places. And, and, and for those who know about outreach, you know that, you know, yeah, it's a mobile library. It's, it's, it's different things that it's, it's tabling, you know, it's all kinds of things that going, going to part, going to play with that. And in this picture here where everybody has the yellow shirts on, that's at the, um, the, the airport. We, we, we have uh, um, services at um, uh, LaGuardia Community, um, um, <laughs> I went to LaGuardia Community College, so excuse me, LaGuardia Airport, and um, and we do programming there. People can come in and grab a, a, a library card and be able to, through Wi-Fi, get books, and the library gets the service, the, the, the credit for that. So we actually have a Queens Public Library branch in LaGuardia Airport, which is pretty awesome. Um, all, other parts of going out in the community, our street fairs, especially in the summer. Unfortunately, right now, because of COVID, we haven't been able to do that, and everything is um, is virtual. But we, as you can see, we we do a hip hop show, and I'll bring a hip hop artist, and a huge crowd, you know, comes in. And throughout all of that, we do tabling there, and we'll 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 sign up people for books. Um, we'll give away pamphlets on programs that we have there. It's great opportunities to get people involved in the library, which is in their community. And sometimes people forget it's right there in their community. Um, 
more 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 um, outreach stuff here, and um, and 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 I I think for me one of the most important things about outreach is that people get a chance to tell you really what they want. You know, like I could sit in my office and say, oh, I think we should do this in a particular area, or I think we should do that. But when you go to the branch and you speak to the the um the local librarian in that particular area, they're going to tell you exactly what the customer is looking for. And you can even do research and 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 talk to to some of the customers about what they want there. We very often do that. We'll come in with a survey and ask people, what do you think? Or I'm doing a program that I think is awesome and nobody seems to be into it. So I say, hey, look, I'm gonna do a survey right now. What do you guys want to, what do you guys want to see? What what should I bring here? And it may be totally something that I'm not thinking about it at all. And so it's awesome to make sure that we are in tune with what the customer wants. Um, we started a um, podcast at Queens Public Library um, for our teens. And it was a grant that was um, allotted to that, that particular program. And it's been running for three or four years now. Um, I forgot that we even started, but the kids are learning how to podcast, and especially now podcasting is very cool, but we were doing it before it was cool. And kids get on there and talk about whatever they're interested in as long as they don't hurt anybody. Um, and they can talk and, and learn how to, you know, present a podcast. And it comes from Queens Public Library. So we have, we're in the uh, podcast space. Um, um, two years ago, we uh, we did a talk like I'm doing right now at um, ALA. And um, this was a presentation that I did with the BC ALA on what I do at Queens Public Library pretty much now. And I invited some of my friends, um, Timothy Ann um, is from the Smithsonian and some other folks that, you know, I knew that are kind of in the um, a different space that hip hop is not normally, you know, like people don't think of hip hop and being in the library, you know, often my son would go to me, why don't I don't understand, why are you doing hip hop at the library? And I said, there's so many people that come in the library, it's a great opportunity for me, a person that is really believes in the culture of hip hop to get that culture out to the public and for them to understand what hip hop is really all about. It's, ne it's not just about what you hear on the radio or what you see on a, a award show. Um, um, and this picture is um, a guy, Damon John from Shark Tank. And, uh, and he was my first guest that I brought to Queens Public Library. He's from Queens, New York. And, um, and people didn't understand why you know he's there because he's not hip hop, Ralph. And I said, actually he is, he started out. And if people who know his story, he sold uh, shirts, T-shirts with a company called FUBU. And um, and he used to come to the jams, the parties, and sell his shirts. And so all the rappers, all the DJs, all the dancers used to wear his shirts. And that's how it became popular. That's how he got a buzz. So any time of the day when you see Damon and he opens his car, he's playing some 90s hip hop music. So Damon is hip hop and he's a part of it from day one. But he's the shark on ABC every Sunday. Um, 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 one of the, one of the other things that's super important to me was to do um, talks and for people to hear and meet some of the people and that they'd never met before. And you know that's easy for me to do in New York, of course, or in LA in a big city. But now with virtual programming, you can do it at any program, at any library, anywhere in the world. So this was a talk that we did with um, KRS One, who's one of the uh, pioneers of hip hop. Um, book talks are very important. In the last five years, I can't believe how many hip hop books have come out and um, and this was a book talk we did with a female rapper from the from the 90s Antoinette and um, she tells her story behind the scenes of uh, of um, of hip hop and uh, and her life and things that went on with that and that was part of our Black History Month I mean I'm sorry um, uh, Women's History Month programming um, last year um, this celebration was awesome because the women often are not getting the shine that they should and so when I asked um, some of the women in history the history of hip hop to come together, they all came. And we had over 50 women come and talk about their story. The program was supposed to be, I don't know, an hour and a half, and it ended up being two and a half hours, you know, but it was worth it and people really enjoyed it. And the and the the women, we gave them certificates for their um their work in the community and things that they do um in the in the music business. Um, we always, like I said in the beginning, celebrate the different elements of of hip-hop and this was a celebration of the graffiti artists um these guys are named shirt kings they're pioneers out of, of queens new york and um and they came back to the community they sell their work for millions of dollars and they came back to to the community and um and did a talk and looked for the next graffiti artist that could um take on 
what they've been doing. DJ sets. We have DJ sets in the library. People go like, Ralph, you are crazy. You have a DJ set going on. Yeah, like around six o'clock, um, you know, we close normally like eight o'clock. And I would have a DJ set going on like around six, a little later, so it doesn't disturb everybody. Um, that could be a little difficult with the noise, but we got around that and um, and people enjoyed it, you know, so we'd have a DJ set going on when you come in and people loved it. You know, they they really enjoyed that part of it. Um, we, like I said earlier, we always salute the, the Queens hip hop pioneers um, and, and they appreciate it. And most of the hip hop pioneers, you know, they started in the 80s. So these guys are and well, men and women are 80, I mean, are 50 years old, 60 years old. So they're older, you know, and they're working. Some of them are retired now. They don't do, you know, what they did 20, 30 years ago, but they enjoy coming out and bringing their kids and bringing their grandkids to a celebration of their life and, and seeing who are the new up and coming artists in that particular area. So this is all about arts and culture if you haven't figured it out yet. Um, so I mentioned Slick Rick earlier. Slick Rick came in and, um, and we talked about empowering the formerly incarcerated and and my um my my colleague that I work with Kim Capers um does programs in the prisons you know we have library uh, cart in prisons in the New York area in Rikers Island we have different programs for um for the families of of formerly incarcerated or and, and incarcerated and um she said what can we do with hip hop Ralph and I said well Slick Rick was incarcerated and can we bring him in and he did a talk and so he did a talk with another guy named Maxwell Melvin about how they changed their life after they came home from prison and how they got involved in the community after being away for a while. And it was awesome. The family loved it. Um, other people that were trying to figure out their life, formerly incarcerated people came, they loved it. And it was, a, it was a, they didn't expect that to be what we were gonna talk about that day because they thought Slick Rick would talk about all his great songs and all the big jewelry that he wears. But he came and talked about how tough it was when he was in prison and how he had to adapt and then he how he had to adapt to when he came home from prison so um, and i think that slick rick really enjoyed that and in this one this is corey wise from the um uh, central park or um um five and um um this was a tough one because corey did a lot of time and he was found um innocent and um he came home after like 20 years and um but I knew him before he went to jail and I reached out to him and he came home and he talked about his love for hip hop because he was a fan of mine. He used to watch me on TV and he loved hip hop music. So I got him to talk about prison life and to talk about hip hop. And it was a great turnout for that event. And it was all part of a, a program that we do every year around um, the holidays called A Time for uh, Kind. And this was a time for healing. And um, so with Black Lives Matter and all the different things that are happening, around the country these are programs that can be not just in the uh, hip-hop space but they can be a lot broader in the overall um community and what's happening across the country um great turnout for that in the auditorium um good talk and uh this was a great talk that we had with um ben harwitz and ben harwitz is a uh is a billionaire and he's um, a lover of hip-hop and um and he 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 you know graced us and said, Ralph, I'd love to come and talk at the library about what you're doing. So once you start doing it, all of a sudden you start reaching outside of the hip hop community. You know, you start, people start seeing what you're doing. You'd be surprised who in your area is a lover of hip hop music. And um, and and Ben, I didn't expect that to happen. You know, I kind of had an idea he was into hip hop, but you know, this guy funds Facebook and, and uh, Clubhouse and all of these things, like he's the, He's an investment guy, but he just is a fan of hip hop music and he wanted to talk about hip hop and how he uses hip hop in, in making decisions in his business. So it was awesome. But these are the type of programs that are are happening, you know, and can happen in your area and in, in when you get to an area, if you haven't started working yet. Um, once again, this was a program that we did and it was called a Ciphering Queens. Totally um, shocked, you know, the folks at the library. I said I have uh, um, I have some statues um, and I want to celebrate um, hip hop and I want to bring the statues in. So they thought it was like you know okay Ralph no problem they're going to be some six foot or no you know maybe four foot statues. The statues were nine feet tall and I saw them in a park in Queens 
and um, and I reached out to the uh, the curator of the program, and I said I want to bring that to Queens Library. So it's one thing to see that program outside in the park in the summertime. When I brought it to the library, this, the the statues almost touched the ceiling; they're nine feet tall. And the people at the library were like, "What are you doing? You, this is not a museum, Ralph." And I was like, "Why not? You know, like why not try something different?" So we started this program, and we did it. And I asked, "Could we keep it there for six months?" And um, the great thing about this was it each statue is called the Cypher in Queens, and each statue represented a, a, a recording artist from Queens that had passed away for whatever reason. And um, and they had they had headphones on it, but you know it wasn't really you know the best thing to do to have people putting headphones on. And we met a guy that um, had these headphones that were wireless. They were like they used them for party for um, silent parties. And Kim, who I work with, said, "Wait a minute, can we put those in circulation and people can check those out with their um, with their library card?" And she went and she checked, and he said, "Yes." So they would check out the headphones, and now that was in our circulation, and it was creating numbers for for the branch and for the and for the um, for the program. And over twenty thousand people came in and were part of that program because it was so outstanding when you walked into our uh, uh, our Jamaica Queens branch and people just enjoyed it. We had school trips there. We had these young DJs who you can see in the top there, um, Kayla and uh, Shakira, and they came up and it was awesome. And so that program was way out of the box. Nobody understood it. I almost didn't understand it, but I knew it was gonna make some noise. And I said, let's take a chance and make some noise. How about that? And um, I, I'm not corny in, in any way. I, you know, I try not to be anyway. <laughs> Maybe to my daughter, I'm corny. But these are people wearing the headphones, and they used to have to go to our service desk and check the headphones out. And if they didn't have a library card, you have to get a library card. So there was a lot happening, library business that was happening right there that was um, was great for libraries and keeping count and, and numbers and things like that. And the Cypher in Queens, those are some of the numbers. We, it was there for six months. Nobody thought it was going to be there that long, but it started out with like 900 people looking at it and went up to 3,800. So that's pretty awesome. Now we get to March of last year and all of a sudden quarantine hits. And I'm super nervous that we have such momentum going with our programs at the library that we're going to lose everybody and everybody's just going to go away and go somewhere. So I was like, what can we do? to keep in touch with the people that we've been talking to for you know these last four years and um we had a, a queen's public library instagram page and we have a facebook page and we have twitter and i said um what are we doing on on um on instagram and um our social media person said not really anything we have you know post up about we, we promote programs that we're doing i said how about if i did an instagram live dj set and he said hey well, if you want to try it try it out and so I jumped on, on Instagram and people started coming on, you know, and they they just and I started playing. I'm a I'm an old school guy, I collect old school 45s. And I started playing like old school music that just to just really get in touch with people and to talk to people, because at the time it was very confusing what was happening with COVID-19 and with the uh, quarantine and people really were confused. I was confused. People that worked at the library, we were all confused. If you weren't, you know, like, I, I don't know, you know, so. We said, look, we got to do something. We got to do something different and we got to connect with them. And you're going to hear a voice and they're going to know a brand that they know, Queens Public Library, and they're going to come and the people came and they listened and they chatted and they were like, yo, we're so happy you're doing this. And we've been doing that ever since. So it's been a year that we've been doing the uh, DJ live streams on Saturdays at one o'clock and the Tuesday event, we turned into a live talk. So I started doing book talks um, at, at the library and, um, and people came on and were like, hey, let's discuss you know this new book um there's a, a woman in our area a jamaican woman she has a great book out um miss chin and she said you know i miss pat she said, i want to talk about my book and i want to talk about um me coming from jamaica uh in west indies to coming to jamaica queens and how we made the the, the move over there and all the music artists that she she found like shaggy and all of these different people and we said yes let's do it so she talked we did a book talk she presented it for an hour on Instagram Live, and our Instagram Live's numbers have gone up so much since the quarantine because people didn't have anywhere to go, and that's how we connected with them. 
as well as our Facebook numbers. Our Facebook numbers are incredible because people didn't have anywhere to go. So, you know, when you know times were tough, we 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 got it going, and and this is what this program is 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 all about. And and um and and doing programs virtually, I enjoy because now I have access to some people that, well, I'm in L.A., I can't come. Oh, I'm in, in you know in Kenya, I can't come now. We could jump on social media, but they don't have an excuse. So um, I, I embrace social media, all the programs and services that we provide use social media even more than we did last year. So um, it changed our approach to how we do this. It changed my approach to um, to presenting um, hip hop music and hip hop culture. And um, and that's it. That's my that's my story for today. I hope you guys and girls enjoyed this right here. And I know we're going to do a Q&A. So um, I don't know if our moderator is here still. I'm here. How we... I'm here. Oh, awesome. <laughs> that, that was amazing. Thank you. Um, and, you know, I'm just going to let the audience know that I'm a fangirl. Um, oh, awesome. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> when you did the program for uh, BCALA, that was the one uh, at the National African American uh, Museum. Yes. And I, I happened to run into Ralph and almost lost my mind and, and my cool in front of him. Um, so we're going to uh, get started with some questions. And one thing before um, I want to read a comment, um, a very good friend of mine, sister, uh, just texted me and she said, why is Ralph given a master class on library engagement and informal community needs assessment? So the, libra <laughs> the librarians are here and they are appreciating your love for the library um, and really you know, just giving us new ideas for some of the things that we talk about all the time, about how to get that engagement and how to, you know, reach people with different ideas and, you know, just everything you talked about with the pandemic. So thank you yeah, so you much know, for that. You know, what's funny is that, you know, when I first came to um, the library, I didn't, you know, I like I kind of knew what librarians do, but I didn't really. You know? <laughs> and then once I learned what librarians do, I was like, wow, this is like super <laughs> important work. You know, like yeah. this is super important work. Like uh -huh. this is feeds everything, you know. Yeah. I said, okay. And so I have utmost respect for librarians and, and everything that they do. And I, I I get nervous when I'm talking to librarians because they're thinking a thousand times. <laughs> Of, about other things that I'm talking about, but <laughs> that's great. Take my ideas, take what yeah. I'm saying, use it in your space, um, because I want the culture of hip hop. You know, like right now, we're currently working on a hip hop museum. Mm. There's got to be a librarian in it. You know, there's got to yes. be a librarian in that yes. museum. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Absolutely, and and you know, to that end, you know, we've had uh, in libraries, usually academic libraries uh, that have uh, robust archives. We've had lots of hip hop collections. But, you know, just given what you spoke about in your mm -hmm. talk, these archives are not always accessible to the people who want to uh, interact with them. So, you know, to, you know, bring these collections and have, you know, a library in the museum and have such such a presence at Queens Public um, is is really taking this to new heights uh, with libraries. And we're so glad to see it. Yes, yes. Yeah, it, it, it's pretty awesome. Even at the Smithsonian. Um, um, I met, I think we had an opportunity to meet the librarian or we mm. spoke to her mm -hmm. sure. and, um, and that was, um, that was awesome. You know, just, just to just see the work that's going on there. And we wanted to just meet the librarian and, and I realized that, oh, there's librarians in each one of these type of spaces or there should right. be at least. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we have a question uh, from Gerald Moore. Um, Gerald is a librarian at the Charleston County Public Library System in South Carolina. And Gerald is asking, did Mr. Uh, did Mr. McDaniels encounter any pushback because it was hip hop music in the library? And did he have to stick with socially conscious hip hop in his programming? Uh, good question. Good question, Joe. Um, yes. Um, there was pushback. Um, thank goodness there was um, somebody there that had tried this already. So it wasn't like I just came in cold. It had already been tried out. And so there were folks there that were doing it, but it wasn't really what they wanted it to be. And they needed some help um, in getting it going. Um, but yes, it's going to be tough. As, you know, like, look, I'm in New York. You know, I mean, you know, some areas may not be as as open to 
you know, doing what we're doing here in New York. Um, but I guarantee you that the public will be <laughs> open to it and mm -hmm. the public will come. And so once they see the numbers and, you know, and then back to your second part of it, did it have to be socially conscious? I was always aware of what we were presenting, you know, and mm -hmm. the language and, and all of that kind of stuff. And, um, and I wanted, I started off with the, the eighties and the nineties, the more, more the eighties first, so that people didn't get too nervous about them. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I think that's the easiest way, if I would suggest, to start off with the old school. You know, we threw a couple of, you know, a couple of new things in there every once in a while just to get the young kids' attention, but they're not really interested in the old school as much. But you'd be surprised how many people in the community do would like to hear a story about a kid in play or Big Daddy Kane or, you know, Public Enemy or Slick Rick, you know, there's a lot of people that would be interested. They're a little bit older, mm -hmm. but start off with that because that gets everybody, you know, at ease and they mm -hmm. feel good. And, and, and it's a little, it's definitely an older audience. Some cases mm -hmm. not, it mm -hmm. might be might be younger, but um, I would I would do that. I would suggest that just so it's uh, it's a little easier to uh, to take in. Absolutely. So we have a comment from Karen, and Karen says, "Ralph, are you sure you're not a librarian?" <laughs> talking library talk now, right? <laughs> exactly. You're pretty good at it. I'm all around right. libraries all the time. Yeah. And, uh, and I, yes, I'm. I'm pretty sure. You know, unless they're going to give me, uh, you know, some type of uh, honorary librarian's degree. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So the next question is from uh, Monica Colon Aguirre. Uh, Monica says, "Your work is not only great; it is inspirational." Do you have any tips uh, for the rest of us for conducting this type of outreach? Hey, Monica, thank you for the question. Um, yeah, you know, look, I think that there's there's great opportunities to connect and partner with other institutions in your area. You know, right off the bat, most libraries are connected with the public school system in some way. Um, that's a great opportunity to bring the public schools in and the, to have them come in for programs. And that's an instant audience right there, you know, and that could be from, you know, um, public school to middle school to high school. High schools are a little difficult because those kids are, are all, all over the place and they're, they're more interested in their phone. So you really have to get tricky and, 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 and do some real cool stuff to get them involved. But um, um, museums in your area, um, other cultural institutions that may exist, there's opportunities to partner with, and uh, and that's what's going to make it work because that's what the community is all about. You know, you know, when I was growing up and as a kid, you know, we we partnered up with things. You know, we did. You know, we you know I played sports, and so we did something with the with the the the, the, the arena in the area. They invited kids. I was so happy to walk into a, a baseball arena when we were invited as kids. You know, and um, so yeah, so you have to do things to partner up, do cool stuff. Um, different institutions in the area, you know, like I said, you know, New York is very diverse. So you have a, a plethora of areas to go and to connect with, you know, from, you know, Latino community to, the, you know, Puerto Ricans, Dominicans, South American, you know, we have, a, and, and each one of those particular areas are different. It's not the same. The culture is different, you know, and so we, we, we deal with all programs, you know, the folks, like the first question was, was it difficult? Because people were like, oh, there's going to be black people coming in here. That, that's that's such a, a, a injustice to what hip hop is. Because Absolutely. everybody loves hip hop mm -hmm. music, you know, mm -hmm. from all cultures, from all walks of life. And once we did, like when we had DMC from Run DMC come in, I mean, it was predominantly a white audience that came. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. they remembered him from the 80s. And, uh, and he came not to talk about Run DMC, he came to talk about graphic novels that he's wrote. And he, ah. he's, he's an amazing uh, artist and writer in that space. And people didn't know that, but you know, the people, some of the people that came, came with, you know, for them tend to sign those, those, those books. So, um, so, so DMC is, is amazing. There's so many artists that have some, have books out right now, I mean, recording artists, they have books out right now, mm -hmm. so um, and they and they they want to they want to talk about their books, and there's not enough space um, to talk about it. You know, there's no. They used to do you know the the Barnes and Noble run, and but that's not happening. Mm -hmm. And so you know, 
I, I suggest to them, well, how come you're not doing the library? And they're like, oh, I didn't know that we could do that at the library. I'm like, yeah, you can. So, Absolutely. Thank you. Mary Ann Roan is asking, is it possible to start the Hip Hop Museum at the library just to get started? Um, well, the Hip Hop Museum um, in New York is going to be in the Bronx. They, they, will not, they won't let me take it to Queens. <laughs> the, Bronx, <laughs> the Bronx is claiming the, uh, the, the, the beginning of hip hop, and I think that's true. And so they're going to um, open the, the Hip Hop Museum in the Bronx. They already have a space um, near Yankee Stadium. Um, they start, I think they started uh, the break ground recently. Um, but that doesn't mean that you can't have um, museums um, in all areas of wherever. You know, there's mm -hmm. different. There's one in D in Washington D.C. There's a pop up. Um, we have um, talked about partnering with Queens Museum and doing a, a, a exhibition with the library, and you know, and, and having that go out to all of the branches in that particular oh, area. Oh, right, right. No, so that's a you, fabulous idea. Yeah. So there are opportunities and wherever you're at, you know, um, I mean, like I know in like I've spoken at um, FAMU in, in Florida and um, and I've partnered with um, my friend, um, a play from Kid and Play. He, mm -hmm. he, has, he has a class there and they have some great programs down there for hip hop and in North Carolina, Ninth Wonder. Um, he has a great program that he does. Um, I think at North Carolina University, if I'm not mis mistaken. And so, you know, there are opportunities to 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 create programs with those um, programs that they have at the colleges. Um, and so, I think that um, if you're in an area that has a, group, a, a, a any type of hip hop program or something, or just a great presence, you know, of a fraternity that's doing stuff, that, mm -hmm. you know, connect with them and 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 get them involved and. And that's that's great outreach for the library. Um, it's creative, it's young, it's good energy, and I think that's good for um, the community overall. Absolutely. And I was thinking, where were these classes when I was in college? Mm, yeah, right. Those Me sound too. amazing, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was awesome. You know, um, Common, Common, the artist and the actor, went to um, mm -hmm. FAMU and um, and others. And and actually, last week I spoke at um. Howard University, they have, um, 30 years ago, there was a hip hop conference that they had at Howard University and I spoke there. So they wanted to celebrate the anniversary of the 30 years and they had me come in um, and talk um, with others that were there 30 years ago. And it was amazing that we look back of the people that were there from Diddy to um, Anthony Anderson, who's on Blackish. Mm -hmm. um, all those people went to Howard University and were at that conference 30 years ago. Wow. And so they hear uh, 30 years came back later and we talked about, you know, the importance of that event happening and um and how we can continue to keep doing that. But now it was in a, such a bigger space. We did it on um on Clubhouse and um and it was huge, you know, Clubhouse is a big app right now and uh um it was it was amazing. So yeah, so it's great opportunities that even even social media, you know, stuff like we do on Instagram. Um, where you can get out there and just get where go where the people are at the, the toughest um, audience for me has always been and for pretty much everybody is the high school students because mm, you know yeah. they're ready to go they finish they're out the door you, you ask them to stay five minutes they're looking at you like what I ain't staying here no longer than I have to <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know and they're, they're they're busy they got a lot they have a lot of things happening in in their in their space so you know, we respect this space, but we try to get them involved as best that we can. And we've done it. You know, I've seen it happen. And they've, they've you know, like they've stopped. You know, they may not stay for the whole program, but we get their, we get their, um, their attention for that amount of time. And maybe they'll come back for something else or we'll give them a brochure or we'll give them some information about jobs. If, you know, that may be somebody else is doing at the library. You know, there's so many different programs that happen in our space. And we just have to kind of do the research and look at well, if I'm not getting their attention with hip hop, maybe I can get their attention with something else. So. For sure, for sure. Uh, Beth Chandler, who is from Montgomery County Public Library, Maryland, wants to know, can Ralph talk a little bit about the connections between hip hop culture and graffiti? Um, yeah, um, well, it's funny. We always, in the, with the elements, 
Um, we always put uh, graffiti uh, has been one of the elements. And, and the guy who started Zulu Nation Africa, Bambada, felt like it was all part of one. But really, graffiti is off on their own. Graffiti is by themselves. They were the first of all the elements. They came in the 60s. You know, they've, they've been, oh, the, the first graffiti artist is, is acknowledged out of uh, Philadelphia, um, Pennsylvania. And, you know, he, he, he was off just doing his thing, art. It was just art. And somehow or another, in the, um, in the 70, late 70s, 78, 77, um, when Africa Bambada put this all together, um, the hip hop, what is hip hop? Because it wasn't called anything. It was just called the jam, you know. And he said, we have to make it a genre, like, like this rock and roll, like this R&B, like this reggae. Mm -hmm. And when he decided to put together hip hop, um, they included graffiti in it because many times, and I know for me as a guy coming up, when you went to, 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 uh, to a, a space where somebody was doing a big, a big um, um, piece of graffiti on a train, or you know, if you were allowed to go in those underground spaces, which I was, they would have a box, a boom box playing mm -hmm. with some some with some hip hop music on it. So that was like the soundtrack to a lot of the guys that I knew, um, not everybody, but a lot of guys that I knew, they were playing hip hop music. But I think that graffiti's always been off by itself. It's like, you know, Basquiat and, you know, and, and all these folks, you know, kind of like came into the space, but they really wasn't in the space like that. But mm -hmm. we embraced them because just like they were abstract, People looked at hip hop as it being abstract, so I think it's 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 kind of the same same thing right now. Right, absolutely. Okay, our next question is from Pamela Thomas, and the question is: How would you suggest incorporating uh, this directly into a public school library? Yeah, um, public schools are great. You know, when I go to public schools, especially with the with the younger kids. Um, my first thing is to get them up and get them moving. Um, so we do like hip hop workout, um, which is crazy. <laughs> and, um, you know, it's, it, it's, it, we were doing this before TikTok was hot. We were way ahead right. of TikTok. <laughs> and so we did um, hip hop Halloween. So, you know, the kids, instead of, you know, eating candy and sweets and all that kind of stuff, it's like, okay, I'm going to have a hip hop workout. I mean, a Halloween workout. And the kids were like, Okay, so they had to have a, 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 um, a costume, and um, and we have a, a, a young guy that works with us who does as a professional and, and works with kids and does dance uh, workouts and things like that. And he came in and the kids started dancing, and I felt bad because they had the uniform, they had their costumes on, they were sweating. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but the kids love it. The kids are the, especially public school kids; mm -hmm. they are into it fast. And and then we do, you know. You know, like part of hip hop, this is outside of the library, is is the dance contest. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's a big thing now on national television. You know, these big dance contests. Mm -hmm. Some of the best dancers are from the Philippines and 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 China and I mean and Japan. And so um it's it's super awesome to bring that into the space because um with the with the with the um dance bands and um and all these things that are on TV, the movies that were celebrating the dancers, the kids know that, you know, mm -hmm. and they, they love to get involved in that. So if you do that, you're going to get super response mm -hmm. in, in, in your school because these kids, they have dance teams, they know routine. This is, this is the greatest time for that right now, especially because TikTok has become um, so popular. And I think that TikTok was great because now you had, you know, in some cases, three generations, grandma, moms and the daughter dancing together mm -hmm. TikTok dance, which is awesome it's also healthy it's a workout you know um check with your you know with your your, your health and safety people in in when you're doing these programs because you you don't want to get yourself in trouble and doing something where you know somebody passes out or something like mm -hmm. that so you just want to make sure that you're doing it in the right way absolutely that's really important so monica is back with a, a another question and Monica wants to know, how do people react to having a DJ set at the library? You did mention you started later in the day, but do you have people stay because they see the setup and decide to check it out or are people taken aback? Um, it's, it, I'd say it's 75, 25, 75 like it. Then there are those 25 people who are like, what is going on here? This is a library. <laughs> Why are you doing this? And, um, 
and you know and i try to invite them and tell them what we're doing and um and get them involved in the conversation because there are there are diehards of what the library should be and i think that um that is not just with the with the the, the um um the people coming into the library um but it's also with the staff right and and that's going to happen you know because they don't believe that you should do that um and and certain staff members didn't agree with it at all and um and you have to do it. And then, you know, they wouldn't come up to me and tell me, but they would go behind my back and tell mm -hmm. me. Who is that person? Hey, no names, no names. So, <laughs> and so, you know, it's it's gonna happen. And, but if you believe in it and it's bringing you and you can justify it, mm -hmm. everything you do, you have to justify, you know, your, your yep. library is out there. So if you can justify it and you can go, okay, we can work around this and, um, and then it may be a discussion. In the beginning, the kids, they, the DJs were coming, they were playing loud. And they were like, well, okay, Ralph, we, we can't, we can do this, but we're not that loud. So <laughs> when we started bringing the volume down, you know, Kim who works with me, she'd be coming out of the elevator like, oh my God, turn it down, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but it. you know, but but it was it was all right. And um, and so yeah, just it's it's gonna be some people that mm, I don't want to hear that. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, and um and that's okay but as as, as long as you know I, I would go around and let people know like this is going to happen at right. this today time so it wasn't a shock yeah you know? so that's this way you know folks would go okay no problem got it got it we also like you know we showed you know in 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 um in our branch and in a number of other branches like we we had a big tv show in the world cup and people would just sit down and watch the world mm. cup mm -hmm. you know and because it was so important to certain countries and they're so involved in those particular uh the world cup you know it's like the it's like i'm not into the world cup you know i'm into you know the world series mm -hmm. and so you know but the world cup was a big thing and especially with the diversity of queens people wanted to see it so you know um i don't know whose idea it was maybe it was the um our, um, our, our director said let's put a big tv in and place was packed and they just mm -hmm. watched the world cup and as soon as it was over they all left but they were there <laughs> and those numbers yeah. counted no, so. Yeah, yeah, and it, and it speaks to library as a as a community space for sure. Yeah. Our next question is from uh, Jarrett Dathier. Uh, shout out to my former student, Jarrett. Uh, Jarrett is saying hi. I love the ways that you talked about outreach and also cross promotion, uh, book discussions to introduce artists and hip hop culture to audiences. Very inspiring. I was wondering if you've ever done any work around the graphic novels hip hop family tree. And finally says, seems like it would be a great way to explore hip hop history with teens and adults. And he says, KRS one forever. <laughs> yeah. Um, yes, I have used the, 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 the family tree novel and, um, and I know those, those guys, um, awesome, awesome book. Um, and we use, um, a, a number of books that are on a regular that help tell the story and 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 you know like in the beginning at one point we used books and then we started doing a hip-hop um movie night mm -hmm. because we have movie night in general in our auditorium and it's very successful people come and want to watch movies in the afternoon from three to five and you know and i said well you know how about if we did a, a hip-hop movie night and we so we showed some of the AIDS movies like beach street and, mm -hmm. and a couple other ones like that and um, so, yeah, there are um, different tools that, that we can use. I, I feel like there's another quest, part of that question that I'm not answering right now. Uh, I, yeah. I think so. Yeah, absolutely. Well, yeah. I, 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 think, I think that for, for um, it's important that um, the support that you get from, from the leadership. Mm, absolutely. That's, that's, yeah, because, you know, we, we could have a million ideas and you know and i'm very passionate about it so when i start talking they look at me like okay ralph really believes in this mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. <laughs> so let's at least give them a shot but you have to be passionate about it as well and understand the goals of the library at the end of the day and if you can help reach that goal with these programs then you're justifying why we're doing it um and that's the key you know and and sometimes it's you know you know, it's not something that you can, you know, get across at the board meeting or the weekly meeting. You might have to take a walk, you know, over to the cafeteria and have a sit down and really, you know, 
sell your idea, you know, and walking on the, in the office, you know, with whoever's, you know, director or leader or your manager or your director of your particular um, um, space. And, and just, you know, or, you know, hey, look, use me as an example, you know, you know, call me up. I'll get on the phone and say, hey, man, y'all better do that. <laughs> <Exactly. down there." laughs> but, um, but yeah, but it's, 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 it's super important to, um, to get leadership involved. Um, these, these, these things are not easy. I mean, I'm, I do it all the time. Hip hop has never been easy. Mm-hmm. Hip hop now is you hear it on the radio every day. You see it on TV every day. Um, but it was not like that when we first started, you couldn't mm-hmm. get a hip hop record played on the radio, you know? And it was like, why? And people just was like, no, it's a fad. People we don't believe in it. It's going to go away. And it just could never went away. And now you, you know, I watch the Super Bowl and I watch these programs and everything is hip hop related. And I'm like, well, it's not going away. And <laughs> right. And it's, you know, it's so it's 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 going to be here for a while, you know. Um, um, I'm some somebody uh, Kim just hit me up and said, you know, talk about how we had to get budgets. Now, that that's something that's super important because okay, where are you getting the money? Yes. To do these programs. Um, and um, and that was a key, you know, because when I came, I said, so, so Kim, how much money do we have? We don't have money, but we're going to figure out how we can get it. And so what what she told me was, I suggest that you come up with a number and then we're going to go to some of the other departments and we're going to ask them for a thousand dollars here or five hundred dollars. here. <laughs> and five, can they give us some money from their budget to help us get this hip hop thing started? And that's how it got started. You know, so there were, you know, children's programming, you know, like, look, I know this is children's program. We just want to use a little bit. We'll use it for children, but for hip hop. Can mm-hmm. we get a couple of dollars from from you? And they would say, okay. And then we started to develop our own, you know, a budget. And so we said, okay, we know how much we can do some programs for. And um, and that's how it got started. It was, you know, um, just just reaching out to other folks. And then, you know, grants started to come around, and we started right. putting hip hop programming in it. And um, and then, you know, once it started to really show that it was uh, um, an important part of what Queens Public Library is all about, then it was, okay, we can designate this amount of money for hip hop mm-hmm. programs. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it started out with, you know, asking other people, you know, um, that, that mm-hmm. hopefully you're, you're, you're that, I mean, that's, you know, you're, they're your friend, you know, yeah. hopefully. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it, it sounds like a lot of other programs that are new, that are untested, if you will, you have to prove yourself and then once they know it can actually bring some folks into the building, they might be more committed uh, and willing to expend uh, some funds. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah. And Kim would also like you to talk about the literacy journals before we finish up. Yeah. So um, the literacy journals is something that we're working on right now, and we're super excited about it because we're going to be including hip hop in it for the first time. Mm. And um, um, just talking about some of the great programs that we do here from Damon John to Slick Rick um, to Book Talks with um, DMC to um, Tech Talks with Large Professor um, in Queensbridge, um, Women's History Month um, programs, just things that we've done that have brought you know hundreds of people to the library that probably hadn't been to the library in a long time mm-hmm. and some that had, you know um, had never been there before. So we're going to put it in the in the uh, journal, um, and hopefully folks will, will will get an opportunity to see it, and that may make um, mm-hmm. the next uh, hip hop program opening up in whatever library a little easier, because now it will be included in a larger space that folks can get a chance to look at it. Right now, you know there are I'm sure I'm not the only one that's doing it, but we want all libraries to see this and to celebrate it and to acknowledge it. And that was my goal when I first came there was to put hip hop in a different space that it had never been before. So we'll, with this journal, um, people will be able to see that forever, you know, which is great. Um, and, um, and hopefully, you know, it'll, people will feel, I, 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 I'm waiting. Look, ALA has been talking about hip hop. And when we, we started talking about it two years ago, you know, they, they were, they really didn't acknowledge it too much. And mm-hmm. then recently I, I saw something from ALA and they talked about hip hop and I was like, whoa, what's this? So we're getting closer to where it can be um, used. Um, it'd be acknowledged in a, in a national way by, 
you know, a space like ALA, but it's okay. We have a BCALA and that's absolutely. Yeah. That's what, that's what, that's why we're there because the trends are going to come from those type of spaces and that's okay. Right. That, that's been happening from, from day one and we're mm -hmm. okay with that. And, um, and just acknowledge it, embrace it, and love it because it's our culture, and and that's what um you know Black Lives Matter has been about at least to me, um it's just being diverse, and that's what you know the Baker Diversity Series to me is about. Yes, absolutely. So we're going to end uh, with a, a question from Gerald, and Gerald wants to know: Do you have a wish list of hip hop artists that you would like to work with uh, in future programs? Yeah, yeah. Um, I would love to have Kanye West. Um, oh wow! Kanye, yeah. <laughs> I think Kanye is incredible. Um, you know, he's crazy. It's just controlling <laughs> that part of it. Um, but I think I could because I, I know he's re he respects me. I've met him before, mm. and he's the, I'm OG to him. So, yeah. uh, um, but Kanye is awesome. Kendrick is awesome. Mm -hmm. J Cole is awesome. Um, wow, so many different different folks. LeBron, mm. you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. awesome awesome um and so you know just the things that they're doing outside of what they do musically or in sports um is groundbreaking and we need to embrace that and and i think that most people don't think about libraries when they do that right. because you're in the entertainment space but um i'm constantly pushing the envelope to get those type of folks to come to the library so yeah mm -hmm. all right so there are multiple, multiple messages uh, coming through Q&A just to say thank you and how much people enjoyed the presentation and sharing uh, your wisdom and all of your strategies um, and just your tips and tricks. And folks just love that you love libraries. So we want to thank you so very much uh, for joining, the, joining us today. This has been an amazing addition to the lecture series and we are very grateful to you. Oh, I'm I'm grateful to be here. Thank you so much, and um, and continue to push the culture, and I continue to push library culture forward. So let's do it together. <laughs> Absolutely. Listen, I will be in your inbox uh, shortly. So yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and to our audience, um, thank you so very much for joining us, uh, and we will be back next week for another lecture uh, given by Dr. Renata Chancellor, who is the program chair and an associate professor at the Catholic University School of Library and Information Science. So looking forward to see you in, uh, excuse me, seeing you all again next week. Uh, and again, thank you so much for spending some time with us and DJ Ralph today. Have a good evening.